Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. So here we are view, it's a very short notice episode of uh, No Budget Reviews. This is a 2001 <laughs> Citroen Zara 2 litre VTS Coupe. It is just a three door hatchback version of the standard five door Zara, but we did market this as the Coupe. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember the advert with, Cla with Claudia Schiffer. I think she was in a pre facelift one of these, a VTS, it was a top model. And this is very closely related to the um, Peugeot 306 GTI 6. It's got the same engine and the same gearbox. So actually, no, I do apologise, it's not got the same gearbox in it, uh, it's actually got a five speed in it, um, but it's similar. The, the rear suspension of things is a little bit different, and of course, the body works different, but underneath they're quite similar, and this is also related to the Citroën ZX. If we look round the back, we've actually got quite a big boot on this car. It's, I think, the same size as the one of the five door. So, for a coupe, a very, very practical car. Look at the space in this. So the owners actually just had this for a couple of months. It actually came from a dealer, which if, if you can believe. Um, I don't really know particularly if you can, oh, <laughs> yes, of course. The spare wheels on, under the floor, and there's the, there's the little tool for getting it out. So we'll just, uh, I, I'm not I'm sure I can see, but it's kind of underneath the floor. It's like the old 306s are. So yeah, over 300 litres of boot space, which is, which is pretty good. We've got some sort of, random strap things in here to secure your luggage and uh, that sort of thing. As far as I understand it, in this country, I think the Zara Coupe was only available in VTR and VTS spec. Um, this isn't a perfect example by any means, but you know, this is this is no budget review, that doesn't really matter. Um, whether you can buy uh, like a VTS for under a thousand pounds though is a moot point because nobody really seems to be able to to find them. This is a, a really rare survivor. So quite jazzy seat fabric, interesting seat height adjuster on these ones. Very kind of circa kind of 2000 um, fabric. Dashboard's very, very kind of plain. Um, just make sure we can adjust that light level. There we go. Use two hands, adjust the light level a bit. Dashboard's very, very plain in this car. Um, very, very plain indeed. There's nothing sort of particularly fancy in here. The stereo has obviously been changed for an aftermarket one because if you want to use cars on a daily basis then you know that's the sort of way that you have to do it if you want your you know infotainment and things like that. As I said earlier on I corrected myself it's a five speed manual in this not the six speed like the GTI 6. We have got air conditioning I think it's available a lot of Zara trims and um, we've got some white dials let's just see if we can get that without the too much like there we are yes white dials again quite simple and clear um, to uh, to read those dials. Um, I'll put the key in in a second. Very unusual sort of to have the horn at this stage in, in car design on the end of the indicator stalk, but that was a sort of, uh, you know, French thing for ages. Um, got volume controls on here, um, and, uh, you know, changing track and muted mode. And aut automatic wipers, wow. Very fancy for 2001, isn't it? It's very fancy. That's a little bit fragile, that trim on there, so, going to uh, just be careful with that. Electric mirrors, of course, electric windows. Um, gearboxes, I've been told a little bit reluctant in this car. That's quite common, apparently, on these, so I must be careful. Right, I better put the key in, which looks a little bit weird, and uh, we'll start her up and see what we can see on the screen. So I'm just still shielding the, uh, the lens a bit from the extra light. There's a little bit too much light, really, um, here at Jill's Garage at uh, Kyneton. Um, for the furious driving social event. There you go, stop light, which uh, has to do with the brake system, I think, actually, um, in, in these cars. You don't really want to see that. Uh, display down here um, shows the temperature and the time. I don't know what this kind of aerial symbol 
if anybody knows about that, then uh, do put that in the comment section below. Or, oh, power shot windows. Fantastic. Let's see if those work. Yes, they do. Amazing. Light power shot windows, viewers. Door pockets are relatively big. We just keep hold of this uh, this door ha handle to stop it um, moving around. Relatively big door pockets. If I just uh, close my secret mission documents there, make sure we're in the right position. See if the see if actually they go in. No. It's not as bad as some of the later French cars where they didn't move the fuse box from left to right hand drive, but it's not the best. The seats are actually quite comfortable. It's very unusual kind of fabric on this with bits of Alcantara and things. Headroom's actually surprisingly good for a coupe as well. Um which is which is excellent. I think we might be using some uh, some maxi uh here possibly to get some uh, chilled air because it's a little bit uh, on the warm side. Maybe I should take the jacket off that would be easy with it. Right anyway let's uh, stop waffling about that and get to the back. So we've got driver and passenger airbags and side airbags in this one. This is a facelifted car. Um, came in around, I think, the year 2000. Just be very careful getting in here. Oh my gosh, that's not good. Ooh. Maybe there is a reason why it's called the coupe. It's because the access has been coupéed, as in cut, because that's what um, fr the French word means. It means cut, coupé. Um, but it wants some in here. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, tell that obviously there's a five-door model of these as well where you put the family in and uh, if you just had some children or something it'd be particularly fine because it'd be easy for them to get in and out and like me when I make my old man noise like Roger Moore and a view to a kill I actually knew that door was going to shut that's going to be interesting getting out never mind uh, we'll have to come back to, back to that later so we've got uh, we've got three Seat belts in here, it's obviously designed for three people. Oh, we've got an armrest as well. Oh, that's really nice, actually. I mean, I prefer if the interior was beige leather viewers, but um, the Alcantara is quite nice. Yeah, the headroom's actually really good. I'm, I'm just a little bit sort of sort of brushing um, the, um, the roof in here, but it's not too bad. It's pretty good, actually. I'm quite impressed you can get a... An ashtray because this is a French car and you need things like that. You can also, I think that's a, belt, a clip for the belt, um, something, something like that, to stop it getting in the way when you're getting in and out because whoo, it's going to be interesting me not falling over various things when I uh, when I get out in a second. Right, let's uh, go and take a look at the engine, shall we? Once I've freed myself from my self imposed prison. So here we have the uh, two litre um, XU engine. Uh, developing in this instance 164 horsepower. I do apologize for the bikes in the background view, it's, it's just uh, where it goes at the moment. Uh, Jill's garage is uh, busy today because of all the people coming to the Furious Driving event. I see a little bit of wall weeping here, but this car is over 20 years old. I mean, you can really forgive that. I think it's done 120,000 miles. Also, something common on cars of this era, not just limited to a Zara, is this. Uh, Problem with the headlamps, I'm sure that will just polish off. It's not really a problem. Um, same thing with the wheels, they just need a bit, a, bit, a bit of attention, which I'll get at some point, I'm sure. But yeah, relatively easy to work with. There's quite a lot of room at the front because when you get your hand down there, but watch that exhaust manifold. A little bit, uh, a little bit hot. Right, I think it's time to go out for a little spin and uh, see if this car is any good on the road. So just a little, little drive out. I've been warned about this, uh, this gearbox linkage. Apparently, it's not the best in this. But having driven some cars with really quite old and terrible gearboxes in my time, this, to be honest, doesn't actually seem like one of them. This seems perfectly fine. So the engine's available in the uh, Zara, I'll just put this window up, that'll be better. We're at 1.4 with 75 horsepower. That was from the TU family of engines. Next was a 1.6 in 8 valve form, which uh, developed 90 horsepower. 
and then 16 valve form which came in I think with the facelift about a year 2000 um, that developed 110 horsepower there was also a 1.8 um, that initially developed I think about about 90 horsepower as like, well as 1.6 I don't really understand that particularly and then later 102 horsepower I think that was dropped for the facelift as well um, I don't really quite understand what that was doing because one point six was so similar in, in power output. Um, both the one point six was a TU engine, the um, one point eight was an XU engine. There were actually three different power outputs for the two liter engine. The earlier cars had about 123 horsepower in the eight valve version. Then after the facelift, there was a uh, I think a 16 valve of 133 horsepower and then at the top of the range there was this uh, 164 brake horsepower engine in the uh, VTR sorry no the VTS I do apologize VTS uh, the VTR would have had one of the, uh, the lower output two litre engines I think there were also some <coughs> diesels available but as usual due to controversial government legislation and uh, all kinds of other reasons we don't talk about diesels on this channel. What we do talk about is the remarkable way in this car that it just seems to sort of glide over the bumps. We've just gone over some railway tracks, actually two sets of railway tracks, and it seems totally unperturbed by them. Totally unperturbed. The uh, steering is, is, is nice. It's a hydraulic system, of course, in this like most power steering systems were at this time. The engine doesn't feel as powerful as I thought it would. It's, I don't know why, it's maybe I'm not like revving it hard enough. But there is quite a little bit of torque. I thought it was going to be a very difficult car to drive with so much power going through the front wheels, but actually it's quite easy. It's very easy to place the car. Obviously, this being a Citroen ZX and Peugeot 306 related chassis, it does mean that uh, you know two cars which are renowned for their handling prowess are a very good basis on which uh, this, this car would draw from and it absolutely does. I don't know, I, I kind of dismissed the Zara in, in period. I knew somebody who had one, it was at 1.4 I think. And um, later a friend of mine had a, an old stage about 2009 when these cars were just totally valueless. And I can't believe actually, just this is pretty good. The gearbox is, is, is a little bit reluctant, but I was warned about that. That's not a problem. The torque actually is quite good. That's pulling from 30 miles an hour in fourth gear uphill. That's that's pretty good. It's actually it's quite comfortable. The seats are weird fabric, but they're very supportive. I'm quite surprised about this car view. So I don't think you can buy a, a VTS for no budget with used money, but like a, a lower powered Zara, you most certainly can. Let's go down here. See what the handling's like. Oh, it's very, very easy to place the car. Very nice. Perfect. That's it, a modern um, Peugeot, I think it's a 2008 sort of behind me. And he's struggling to keep up. This is this is quite amazing. It's um, it's weird. Just these, these don't look like much of these cars, but they really are very nice to drive. Like the driving position is also quite good in this car. I'm surprised. Um, normally, I, was, I assume that something like a 306 doesn't have the best driving position, but this seems okay. It's quite helpful that this is a road that has a very good surface on it. But nevertheless, I'm surprised how much fun this actually is. Trim levels available um, in the Zara, the main ones anyway. There are probably others, but um, I've done this review with quite short notice, so I haven't had a chance to research as thoroughly as I normally would. Were L, LX, and SX. And then we had things like the Forte. And the, uh, and the Desire, I think that was an exclusive as well. I 
and then with the Zara Coupe, which is this three-door version, the VTR and the VTS, there might have been others, but I do apologize if I've missed them. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by this car here. I mean, uh, unfortunately, this car's got a couple of bits of loose trim, and one of the bits of door trim just fell off as I shut the door, but, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world, is it, really? Right, I suppose we'd better take this car back to, uh, to its owner and kind of sum it up. Um, it has been fun, though. So viewers, from uh, Jilt's Garage, the Citroen Zara VTS. What a pleasant surprise. I can't believe how nicely this car drives. I mean, sure, the gearbox isn't the best I've tried, but it's not horrendous. Um, the uh, bits of interior trim aren't great, and that, that did fall off during my test drive, but this car's over 20 years old. What do you expect? I'm actually very impressed with the way this car drives. It really would suit an enthusiast who doesn't want to, want to compromise on a practicality. If you really want a car with a five-door shape, I suppose you could um, maybe go for, I, th I think the GTI 6 Peugeot is maybe available for a five-door. I can't remember now, actually. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty good. Obviously, watch the rust, watch to make sure the cam belt's been done in this, that sort of stuff. But these are pretty rare. So, yeah, you don't have to have this car. You can get... Zara's for under a thousand pounds and this one's worth a little bit more than that um, because these are just so rare but uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic I'm very very happy to have had a go in this thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching thank you to the owner let me have a go in it uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel like this video leave a comment below and uh, there is more footage out there from the uh, Furious Driving Social event at uh, Jilt's Garage at Kyneton um, on the channel if you want to see it I'll put it a link in the description below Thank you.